Hey everyone, welcome back to another Figma tutorial uh, for the Ionic design system. So today we're going to be continuing on on our demo and today I thought we could be t uh, instead of me making up a page that doesn't really make that much logical sense um, we can just um, pull a web page from the internet and try to replicate it in native Ionic and see what it comes out like. Um, so what I have pulled up over here is the cart page of Nike. So first things first, let's pull up a new frame and we'll just copy over this toolbar to get started. So now that we have this set up, let's get started from the top. Um, so, so to start with, we have our title over here. I think this can be an ion item. This is kind of like spanning from here to here. And at the end, instead of a note, let's do with, you know, let's get a full list item so that they're equal in size. I think we can turn the lines off for this. To, to select the lines, you basically just uh, go in and select the label layer. And you'll find the border shadow right here, basically. So the reason I used a shadow to create this border is so that when you grow or shrink this item, uh, the border grows with it. Complicated reasons why, but basically to turn off the border or the lines of any item, you can just come over here and turn the border off. And there you go. If you ever need to add it back, you can just come over here, go to effects and select um, item and just get the item border back. So that's how you manipulate the border on ion items. And also I think we want this to be kind of like a text medium color. So let's pull this out. Um, so it looks like there's like about 16 pixels of padding on either side here. So I'm just going to do something similar. So for the stroke, I'm going to use light shade. That looks like a pretty good match for this. And this should be some kind of like a warning color, I guess. Or, you know what, we'll make it our brand tertiary color. So when you set up your brand, you would have this kind of be your tertiary color. And below, we just need some other plain text, so. And now for the body text, we'll use something like body one from over here. And I think text medium here is gonna be perfect. Uh, we can uh, wrap this up to fit nicely within. I'm gonna use auto layout on this member group basically just so that I don't have to manage um, the size of it myself. That's a good start there. Let's add some underline to these things. Ooh, can we not style text? That's rough. So since we can't style um, text, I'm just going to make these a slightly different color to make them stand out kind of a little bit like that. Uh, for the next thing, um, I think we should just use an ion item insti inside of a frame here too and pull out an item. Uh, let's make it fit here. We're going to call this layer the promotion box. Uh, it looks like this fill, if we were to add a fill to our parent, it would kind of be like a light, I guess. Just so we can uh, manage the background color of this um, box from the promotion frame, I'm just going to go through the iron item and make all the layers transparent or basically just get rid of the fill from all of them. So yeah. Ooh. Okay, so it looks like we can't get rid of the fill from this I part of the item. Because then, oh wait, no, we don't need the line anyway. Okay, so let's get rid of the item border and let's get rid of the fill there. And it looks like there's no more fill. So now if we go up here, and add a fill of light. There we go, perfect. Uh, this item, we don't want anything. And when we come over here, first thing, let's add this X into our item. So we'll use the icon here. Turn off the button, um, and for the icon, we're just going to close. Close. 
Also, it looks like this item has... Well, let's wait and see if we need to add that padding around it first. And let's add some secondary text to this thing. Okay, so whenever you run into this issue of the text wrapping, just come over here and set the resizing to the to auto width, basically, so it grows with whatever text you have. The next issue we're running into is that the item is clipping outside of the box, so let's just add some auto layout to the parent. And now we got something that looks pretty similar to this, I'd say. Okay, so it looks like we got these two boxes looking pretty good. Uh, next, we should go down to this section. So this is the product listing section. Um, the way I'm looking at this is I'm seeing an item right here. Then I'm seeing this kind of looks like some bad wrapping because it says size here and then it has the selector over here. So it looks like this should actually be over here. So we can use an iron select for that, I think. And for our quantity, I think we'll make that a select type of item too, just to keep it consistent with the size thing. Because I think that should be quantity and then the select should be over here. So let's get started with that. Let's open up a new frame. Uh, let's make sure it's the right size. There we go. Let's pull it up a little bit. Let's call this product or cart item is probably a better name. Uh, let's put up in, uh, let's, we're gonna need one item for this and another item for the selector and then another item for the quantity selector. And then we're probably gonna want some button at the end, we'll get to that for the more options later. So first thing I'm gonna do for this part is actually I'm gonna set up the layout rules first just to make it easier on myself so i'm going to resize these all to be um get 343 and center all these why are they oh they're centering against themselves okay there we go i'm going to add some auto layout to this container and let's drop some lines in here so from here to here And we're gonna have this fill container and yeah, medium. So this is a good example, I think, uh, of where we don't want any padding. So let's just zero this out. And we're gonna want divider. Let's add a divider to our top also. So move that over here. Why aren't we seeing it? What's the dealio? Okay, so it seems like um, auto layout won't show the top element if it's one pixel thick and there's no padding. So I just added some padding to show the top border over here. Um, and then next, all right, so the first item should be a thumbnail item. So let's make that a thumbnail. The next item we want to be a select item. So you know what, we just have a pre-made select item built in anyway. So I'm just gonna select that. Uh, there we go. Okay, so just had to change some properties there. So instead of using this, let's just use another one of these. And I think we're getting pretty close. Now we want to add, I think this should be a secondary text here. So let's add, and let's do size and quantity. Also, we want to get rid of all the borders on these items. So let's just go ahead and select all these and remove the border there. Cool, so that's what the out of the box styling looks like. I think I wanna make these kinda of like subdued just because they're standing out a lot. So I'm gonna select text medium over here. And lastly, we need to throw in this button in here somehow. So let's just throw a, I think a block level outline button would look pretty good here. So like more options or something. So let's just use a button. Throw it in there. Um, and go into it, make sure we have it set to fill container so that when we expand it, 
it does not mess up. Uh, let's just hit fill container and let's use, I think, mm, let's use a small size. Let's make an outline and let's make sure its child is still filling container. Let's use more options. I think this button as a whole can be like a mm, a light shade with maybe like medium text. Yeah, maybe. And I think after the button, I'm just going to throw in a spacer real quick. Just a 16, uh, yeah, it looks like about 16, so a 16 by 16 spacer. Turn off the visibility there, and I think we've got something that looks pretty much functionally the same as this, and in all native Ionic components, which is pretty solid. If I do say so myself, I think I'm going to add that spacer um, up above too. So a nice thing about auto layout is just how you can use arrows to move stuff up and down. So there we go. I think that spacer up top is a bit much. Can't select items that are transparent. Uh, I think let's go with like eight. All right, that looks like something we want. All right, I'm going to cover the second half of this later because this has already become kind of a long episode, I think, and this is kind of boring. I think it's just, this is mostly just going to be like a bunch of iron items with a uh, an accordion over here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We can add our product carousel for this. So I'm going to call it a wrap on that mostly, and then maybe I'll come back and finish this part of it. But for now, just to make this kind of feature complete, uh, for one, let's name our frame. Uh, so bag and let's add a proceed to checkout button. So center it. Boom. Kind of like right there. And let's make a large button just because this is kind of our call to action. There we go, and that'll be our primary color just because that's the main action we want people to select. And yeah, if we wanted to, we could make this, uh, whatchamacallit, a full width button. Just go in here, do that. That could be an option, put this down here, have another one of these. So when you're working on designs like this, I recommend just kind of, um, turning making one of these and turning it into a master component so that if you ever need to make changes you're not you don't end up like running around and updating a bunch of components at once just makes life that much easier yeah so that's kind of the first half of the nike page right there hopefully that helps you in understanding how the design system can be used to quickly work out these designs without having to go in and move stuff pixel by pixel a little more and just more of just filling in slots that then your developers can use really easily. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for watching and bye bye.